Open your Bibles and we can get started. We can enjoy the Word. Whew. Thank you, my Father. If, if we go to the book of Luke, Chapter 4, Luke 4. Remember that word is inspired, it is breathed on. The Bible says it's either 1 Timothy or 2 Timothy 3.16 says all scripture is, is given by inspiration um, of God. Another uh, translation says every scripture is God breathed. <laughs> so there's, when it's God breathed, it's fresh inspiration. So when we, when we read and it's something that you've heard before, you need to listen again to hear what's, what's fresh and what's, you know, inspired for now. Okay, so if we read Luke 4, it comes in the time of, um, you know, Jesus' temptation. And um, anyway, verse 3, the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God... Command the stone that it be made bread. Now, verse 4. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, okay? But by every word of God. Okay. Another, another maybe it's in Matthew. It says, but by every word which proceeds, which proceeds. Now, you have to understand the time, you know, bread was popular, fish was popular. Even today, sowing and reaping, we speak about, but it's because in those days there was the business, you know, sowing and reaping. So a lot of the stuff that Jesus addressed, we, we tend to miss. But imagine, you know, bread. You live by bread alone. You don't live on, on yesterday's bread. How you guys have take weak old bread that's been like lying around and you chow that thing okay <laughs> I don't like to eat bread that is old and stale and and bad but that's what he's trying to say Jesus you know you don't you don't eat old bread okay he says but you in the same way that you eat something fresh you need to eat he says but by every word now that word is which proceeds. You don't continue. That's why people miss revelation from God. For example, if you've heard John 3.16. Today, God wants to show you something from John 3.16. Because you heard it. And you think, well, I know it already. You miss the revelation that God wants to, to give you because it was yesterday's bread. <laughs> Last week's bread. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Sometimes we, we get to a point that we say we know it. And in our relationship with God, that becomes quite dangerous. Because you get so smart and your relationship with Jesus just goes... Because we designed God to, to live on word that proceeds. So God is constantly... There is word proceeding. So like there is fresh bread, you go buy fresh bread... You need a fresh word from God. It's not yesterday's bread. <laughs> it's today's bread. Okay? If you're in a place where you're frustrated in your relationship with God, it's because you need to hear what God says. It's because you, you got to a point where, the, where it's become stale. <laughs> you understand? You're not going to eat yesterday's bread all right and so maybe god said something awesome and you've just been riding on that thing no it needs to stay inspired so that's why we emphasize when you hear you need to hear what the spirit of god says so if we go to romans chapter 10 hope this really speaks to you romans 10 
All right, verse 17. So faith comes by what? Hearing. Faith comes by hearing. So if you don't have faith, what do you need? Hearing. You don't need to try and get more faith. We need to hear God. We need to hear God. So faith comes by hearing. Interesting. Hearing. Hearing. Continuous. A continuous word. Hearing. Hearing. Faith comes by hearing. It doesn't say faith comes by, by having heard. Different. It doesn't say faith comes by having heard. Faith comes by hearing. So church, you need to hear. You need to get to a place in your life. You need to keep still and you need to hear. You need to hear what God says. Your, your, your faith is dependent <laughs> on hearing. You need to hear. Um, it's quite a... And, and we know that we need to hear what the Spirit says. We need to hear what the Spirit says. Hearing God. Hearing God. Sometimes I... I remember one of the kids in the school asked a big question, but how do we hear God? How do we see? How do we have a relationship with someone we don't see? You know, how, how do I speak? Because I found, even in Scripture, did you know, most of the times when God spoke, He did speak audibly from a voice. But it's quite interesting, like, if, you, if you've seen the Gospels, when God spoke... Only some people heard it. Yeah. Interesting, you know? Only some people heard. Some people say they heard thunder. When, when Jesus appeared to Paul, only Paul saw him. Interesting. So we, we need to understand something about the voice of God. That it is not sometimes we pray and we want to hear, you know, Jason, my son, you know? Or... Whatever. We, we want, because we in this world where we see things, where we hear things, where we, we call it the five senses, and become quite confusing because we don't understand when God is speaking. You get scriptures like Hebrews 4 and Psalm 95. You can pick it up. It says, repeat it twice. In Hebrews 4, Psalm 95, it says, Today, if you hear His voice, I believe we've all heard his voice you've heard his voice you have heard, i guarantee you you have heard his voice i guarantee you he's spoken to you but you need to continually hear it you need to continually sit and say faith comes by hearing lord here i am amen all right so let's go to second corinthians and we're going to go to chapter 13. Check what he says here in 2 Corinthians 13. Since you desire and seek proof, listen, of the Christ who speaks in and through me. So these guys were challenging Paul. <laughs> Are you really hearing God? Are you hearing God? And this challenge comes in. Since you desire and seek proof of the Christ who speaks in and through me. I want to encourage you. The words that I'm speaking, the, the words that shared in this ministry, contains the power to save your life. <laughs> Okay, to save your soul. It's powerful. It's really powerful. I'll say it again. These words are powerful. If you'll apply them, they'll work for you. They do work. Okay? But it's, it's always amazing. Sometimes, maybe even in your personal life, I'm not just trying to say from a pastor's perspective, but it can seem quite lonely. It can seem quite odd because sometimes I've found... I've got friends and family. It's family that, that really hates me just because, because of my faith until they need a miracle. Until, 
until they need their only, their only hope is God. Then they phone me. Then they message me, hey brother, I'm really in need of a job now. It's been a long time since I had a job. Can you just pray for me? Then I'll pray with them. And then they get the miracle. And then you never hear from them again. It's always funny, you know, people give people of faith a hard time. Then they, and then, when they need a miracle, then they phone you. Then you're in a place where you need to speak to God on behalf of them. <laughs> and allow them to get a miracle. You know, and it's always funny. Because we become the most criticized people on the planet. To the till we need a miracle. Then we know that God is, is real, that God is alive, that, that God heals, that God delivers, and there's someone who believes in it. <laughs> Let's go there. So now, now this Corinthian church says, Since you desire and seek proof of the Christ, who speaks in and through me, he goes on to say in verse 4, For though he was crucified in weakness, Yet he goes on living by the power of God. Now, then he says, though too, we are weak. Okay? We are weak in him. Yet in dealing with you, this is a strong one, we shall show ourselves alive, strong, and in fellowship with him by the power of God. So now, chapter, verse 5. He says, examine and test and evaluate your own selves. Alright, so we're in a time of exams and tests. And here's an exam for you. Examine and test and evaluate your own selves to see whether you are holding on to your faith and showing the proper fruits of it. Christ in you. <laughs> you see, they, they're challenging Pastor. <laughs> Does God really speak through you? He says, now you're trying to test me. Don't test me, test yourself. <laughs> Put yourself on a test. Test yourself. Put yourself on an exam. Give yourself the exam and see if you are bearing the fruits of it. And he goes on to say, Do you not yourselves realize and know that Jesus Christ is in you? <laughs> we always want someone, someone, let's meet with God. Let's go speak to to the pastor or to the man of God. And let him speak to God on behalf of me. And Paul says, hey, there's your own test. Jesus Christ is alive in you. You're responsible for your relationship with God. And we've just made it a, a come to church thing. and I don't know. It's supposed to be something that's alive. Something that's flourishing. Something that is, is happening now. So examine yourself. Test yourself. He says, what does he say? So the point is that Christ who speaks in and through me. That's the point. Then he says, examine yourself whether you are holding to your faith. So how does faith come? By hearing. So you need to get to a place where you are hearing. So I'm asking you, are you hearing? So, let's go to Hebrews chapter 4. I know you are hearing me today. You are hearing the words of God. Hebrews 4. We'll just... Alright, verse 12. The word that God speaks is alive Woo! and full of power. It is sharper than any two edged sword. Okay, so you know what you're hearing. Go to chapter 3, verse 7. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, 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 
if you will hear his voice do not harden your hearts do not harden your hearts don't harden your heart when you hear his voice if God is speaking to you do not harden your hearts Paul goes on to say in the book of Acts he says I I exercise a conscience that is void of offense towards God and man we have to be careful for the reasoning of the heart you know Jesus addressed the Pharisees he addressed the disciples he says why do you reason in your hearts why do you reason in your hearts I think it's something that we we all guilty of we reason we reason yeah but this and this you know, you're constantly reasoning constantly reasoning in your heart there's a time when Jesus multiplied the bread and you can follow the whole story in the book of John and he gets to the point where he needs to feed people sometimes where well, they need to eat and they are questioning where are we going to get bread <laughs> just as a question and they would say stuff like, oh, we don't have money he says why are you reasoning in your heart you know what happened yesterday you know he multiplied the bread at that I do this occasionally to help me with reasoning because I too sometimes get to a point where I reason like yeah but where is this so everything that God does <laughs> for me and every word that he speaks I write down and occasionally when I go over it like whoa wow that's awesome <laughs> and I remember what, what God what God did for me yesterday remind you of a sermon about going forward that the, the word faith is very similar to um, apparently in the Greek is like a, a rower that's going that way in order for him to go that way is to look back I know they say we don't look back but in, in its right context when we look back and we remember everything that he has done and you might sit here in want and in need and think that God hasn't done anything for you because that's the deception that comes with want and with need but if you silence those thoughts you can look back and see how he's been faithful 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 all right so church examine yourself test yourself to see whether you are holding to the faith where you are holding to the faith um, what is your relationship with Christ built on is it built on need what if all your needs were met today what will your relationship with God thrive on if you're not trusting for some source of provision somewhere now, all the kids are home all the kids are blessed all the bills are paid good finances coming in will your relationship with God <laughs> be able to sustain itself if there's no need now, this is what Paul is saying we need it, it's supposed to be something that that God speaks that we have a relationship sometimes I wonder if we take all the things that we are trusting for just away um, someone caught it I think Job caught it the, the last time now the world has gone a bit further ahead than the church I don't know, you must go check documentaries in the sense of you know studies and, and they, they believe that people are going to live longer within the next 30 years how many of you guys have seen that? 30-50 years they claim that people can start living over 100 to 200 they believe to 500 years if <laughs> if science gets it right to get people to live for 500 years what impact will that have on faith what impact think about it logically what what will a lengthened life how will it impact the church 
if we take, if we die away out of the picture. Because a lot of us, we live, we believe, so we can go to heaven. <laughs> How will that impact us? How, if all our needs are met? So I'm just hammering on this point. I mean, just hang here for a little while. God has called us into a relationship. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing God's voice. Sometimes it feels like He's silent. Like He's not speaking. It's not true. You know, your feelings are, are very deceptive. I believe we hear His voice every day. I believe He's speaking all the time. I want to show you something interesting in the Scriptures that, that blessed me. If we go to Romans 10, hope this helps. Romans 10, we go back to verse 17. Faith comes by hearing, and what is heard comes by preaching. Now Paul says, But I ask, have they not heard? And he says, Indeed, they have. For the scripture says, Their voice. Oh, this is so good. I love, this. I love this. Their voice, that of nature bearing God's message, has gone to all the earth and their words to the far bounds of the world. Did, did you see that? Their voice. So someone is speaking about a select group and is quoting from Psalm 19. He says they have heard their voice. And we've all heard their voice. Can I show you what, what voice that is? Let's just read it one more time. Have they not heard? Indeed they have. Their voice has gone out to all the earth and their words to the far bounds of the world. Now that is a quotation from Psalm 19. Go to Psalm 19 and then you'll see what voice it is. Hope this blesses you. Verse 1, not the, if you're there. Listen. He says, The heavens declare the glory of God. <laughs> and the firmament shows and proclaim His handiwork. Next. Day after day pours forth speech. Night after night shows forth knowledge. Next. There is no speech nor spoken word from the stars. Their voice is not heard. <laughs> Next. Yet their voice in evidence goes throughout all the earth. Their sayings to the end of the world, of the heavens, has God made. And He says, Ten for the sun. Everything is busy screaming, evangelizing, beaming forth. You know, the existence of God and... And, and His glory says the heavens declare the glory of God. I'm, I, try, I went and sat by the ocean and you just sit there and it's just wave after wave. And you can hear everything just saying, you know, I am, I am, God, I am, I am. You know, it's just like it comes like that. I think a lot of times why in our faith we get frustrated because we don't, we don't see God in these areas because we're boxed in into these walls. You're sitting behind your phone. You're getting all kinds of messages from bitter people. <laughs> and you're thinking, yes, where's my faith going? Because the people, the things that are speaking to you <laughs> is not these evangelists. <laughs> Sometimes you need to get out of this madness that man made, of these bold things. You need to sit in a place where it's just God's creation and let it speak to you. <laughs> and let it declare the glory of God to you. Say, yes, my goodness. Something that happens when you look at the, 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 the stars and like David said, what is man that you are mindful of me? You know, you need to go. You feel really small when you look at that big ocean. It's like, goodness. And he loves you. And let him minister to you. But I'm saying we need to awaken something in our hearts. 
I want you to, we're going to read some scriptures here. And we are nearly finished. But let's go to um, 1 Kings chapter 19. He did something really cool that, uh, in, this, in this book that I... 1 Kings 19. Story of Elijah. All right, verse 11. Are you hearing? Faith comes by hearing. Today when you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. (laughs) And he said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind rent the mountains, and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. Now he says, But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord <laughs> was not in the earthquake. You see, we always look to external things. We want an external message. We want something to come from the outside to, you know, don't work like that. He says, and, and after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. Then he says, you know the story, and after the fire, a sound of gentle stillness and a still, small voice. A still, small voice. And look what he says he does. Elijah, what did he do? He heard the voice. And what did he do? Check. And Elijah heard the voice. And then he wrapped his face in his mantle. He took a mantle. <laughs> Let me see if I can do it here. And he wrapped his, <laughs> his face in it. No seeing. No hearing. Nothing from the outside that can influence. Nothing from an external world. He heard the still voice. It's not in the earthquake. (laughs) It's not in the fire. Put it on over him. And he says, And he went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? So, remind you of Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 he says I will position myself I will stand on 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 the watchtower he says and I will look (laughs) to see or to yeah look to see what he will say to me but he says I will position myself in stillness stillness and it's not really sometimes there is so much noise external but what about the internal noise that you have Psalm 46 verse 10 you would have heard this quoted to you maybe a hundred times be still and know (laughs) that I am God What does that mean? Let be and be still and know that I'm God. Be still. Be still. Be still. And know. So, in order to know, where must the silence take place? In your thoughts. So the thoughts have to be still. I have to be still. I have to stop reasoning. I have to stop worrying. I have to stop being anxious. I have to get myself to complete peace and know He is God. And know He is God. And know I am. So that's why the Bible says anyone who comes to to Him must know that He is. (laughs) It's in Hebrews. And that He is the rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Hope this is good. 
Hope this is good. All right. Position yourself in stillness. Okay? Position yourself in stillness. Position yourself in, in quiet. Position yourself in quiet. I gave a little, I gave a little um, practical tip. I don't know how many of you guys can remember, but maybe about a month or two ago about being quiet. If you will quiet yourself <laughs> and just sit still in a place, and try and quieten your thoughts. Like try and think on nothing. <laughs> and when a worry pops up, it's like, um, Kobe, Kobe taught me this. So he's, I remember sitting at an airport and he was sitting with me and we were doing this together. And, um, and he said, okay, now as soon as a thought pops up, get yourself a little bus. So I got like a little yellow one. <laughs> He says, put that thought in the bus and let it go away. <laughs> it's so silly, but it works. Till the point that your mind is still. And when you know you're still, then, then, um, then you, you say, then you just meditate on the goodness of God. Quieten your thoughts and just think of God. Just think of how good He is. Take a scripture. It's powerful and it's massive and meditate on it. We need, in this time that we're living in, with the information that is poured out at us constantly, with the news that is constantly poured out, with, with people that are attacking the church constantly. I mean, just social media. Just put that thing down. Put it away. <laughs> put it away and just have peace. Get the mind of Christ. Colossians 3. Quickly put it there. Not there. And then I'm, I'm, I'm done. Finished. But one. We'll start with this one. If then you have been raised with Christ to a new life. Okay. Aim at and seek the eternal treasures that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand. Next scripture. Set your minds and keep them set on what is above. So not, I always say, not in altitude. like in, Because if you think that the earth is round, there is clouds at the bottom of us as well. You thought about that. So above is not up. Because my up is someone's down. <laughs> think about that <laughs> alright unless you believe that the earth is flat some people so it's higher thoughts so and I love how it says you know Christ has been seated so now I have to set my mind on things above where Christ is seated so Christ must be seated in your mind in your thoughts it must be when it's when we say you know like when we say i exalt thee do you know that he is exalted we used to sing songs like lord we're crowning you with many crowns he's already crowned you can't crown him <laughs> but in here when things are raging and going mad and oh i don't know you know for example the scripture that says the fool said in his heart, there is no God. It's not speaking about atheists. It's speaking about believers who have reasoned and said there is no God. Because they've allowed the worries and the concerns in their hearts. So it's a, it's a foolish thing. So when we set him high and above, all right. So uh, I think you're hearing what I'm saying. Make every effort. Um, this is my closing. Um, Hebrews it says, labor to enter the rest. Labor to enter the rest. That makes no sense. Unless you understand that there is something we need to do to hear God's voice. Make every effort to get to a church that speaks truth. <laughs> Make every effort to get to church or to get have a prayer time in the morning or to listen to 
worship when you know your vo- your heart is not in a good position when you know you are struggling to hear god when you know you need to hear make every effort to enter that rest be still and know that i'm god faith comes by hearing and hearing <laughs> by the word of god amen so judge examine yourself <laughs> Test yourselves to see whether you are holding on to the faith. Do you not know that Jesus Christ is alive in you? He's living in you. Take that mantle, put it around your your eyes and your your ears and and sit and know that He is God. Get outside and see creation declaring the glory of God. Einstein said, Some people live like nothing is a miracle. Others live like everything is a miracle. Be amongst the people that believe everything is a miracle. Wow. (laughs) That's awesome. Wow. That's awesome. Amen. Amen. Let's all close our eyes and we can pray together. Mm. Father, we thank you that you're alive that you're living <laughs> on the inside of us that you your presence resides permanently and somehow you occasionally even visit us <laughs> lord jesus in this this information age it's crazy the things that it's it's like a, there's there's a war of words constantly thrown thrown at the church thrown around Lord Jesus, help us be the people that are still and know that He is God. Speak peace over every heart, peace over every mind, peace in every body. And I, I thank you, like Lerato shared the testimony of your of your your faithfulness and your power that is at work. Lord, well, that that people get excited again about a new fresh inspiration about what God is doing in and amongst us thank you that you are God who speaks you're not Baal (laughs) like Elijah at the showdown with you're alive and you're powerful I thank you my father I thank you father I thank you Jesus thank you Jesus amen